I stood under the gallows, hood low, the stench of unwashed bodies, a rancid cloak around me. They hadn't hanged me yet, but the whispers were a noose tightening. Which boy? they hissed. Devil's spawn. The accusation festered inside me like maggots, not because it was wholly untrue. Mother kept a shrine of cracked bones and dried herbs folks found unsettling. No, it was the certainty they had. The way it made me... expendable. Not like the miller's sons caught hand in the cookie tin, their punishment a cuff and a smirk. The village elder, old Jonas, stooped and wheezing like a bellows stuck halfway, climbed onto the platform. His yellowed eyes held mine, not in hatred, but with that calculating coldness familiar to anyone who'd ever pawned their wedding rings when the harvest failed. We gather, Jonas's voice croaked, thin and bird-like, to judge Adrian, son of... Well, the parentage is unclear. Someone snickered, and the sound rippled through the crowd. My face burned. Mother never spoke of my father, and her silence was its own accusation. The charge... Jonas cleared his throat theatrically. Sorcery. Spells and curses whispered in the dead of night. He pointed a gnarled finger at my worn boots. Seen him collecting toadstools in the mist, plucking strange flowers that glow in the moonlight. Tell me, boy, what bruise bubbled in your mother's pot? I opened my mouth to refute the lies, but the words curdled on my tongue. My potions were simple things, fever soothers and sleep drafts. But how to explain that to men who saw only difference? And indifference found their power. Jonas squinted, then gave a tight little nod like he'd expected my silence. Very well then, death by hanging. May it purge the evil that has tainted our village. I didn't shout my innocence. Some part of me believed their judgment. Wasn't I an outsider, a shadow in the corner of their safe, ordinary lives? Then the warlock came. He materialized from the thinning crowd, tall and imposing, robes the color of twilight. Not a single villager challenged him, their gazes skittering away like rats. Only Jonas held his ground though the cane he gripped trembled ever so slightly. The warlock's eyes settled on me. Ice blue, with a piercing intensity that flayed me open. A curious charge, he mused, his voice a low, silken rumble that carried across the square. What say you, boy? I... I heal, I stammered, with herbs and old remedies. It sounded pathetic even to myself. He raised an eyebrow. And yet here you stand beneath the hangman's knot. His gaze drifted over the crowd, alighting briefly on Jonas. The elder paled. Whatever silent exchange passed between the two men, it was enough to shift the tides. A trade then, the warlock said. He placed a hand on my shoulder, fingers branding me through my tunic. Service in exchange for life. I have great need of a potion brewer and those who call you tainted will not begrudge me your presence. He flashed a smile devoid of warmth. Do we have an accord? Desperation choked me. I wasn't innocent, not by their standards. But neither was I a killer or a thief. And I didn't want to die. I nodded, the motion small and jerky. This might be a different sort of noose, but it beat the feel of hemp. The warlock turned on his heel with a swirl of his cloak. The crowd parted before him like a flock of pigeons scattering before a hawk's stoop. I stumbled behind, head spinning, the relief of escaping the noose warring with a deep, coiling dread. His dwelling was a squat tower of blackened stone, clinging to the skirts of the village like a leech. Jonas might have protested my presence, but even he cast fearful glances as we passed the outermost fields. Whispers followed him. The warlock of Ravenwood necromancer, demon's consort. And now, I was his bound apprentice. The inside of the tower was an interplay of shadows, a stark contrast to Mother's sun-dappled hut with its tang of drying herbs. Dust danced in the thin shafts of light piercing the narrow windows, the air dense with the smell of rot and something unpleasantly metallic. He gestured me towards a workbench laden with bubbling vials and tarnished instruments. Your craft, he said, the cold fire in his gaze never dimming. 
needs refinement. A cauldron simmered in the hearth, the sickly sweet aroma turning my stomach. I'd never brewed anything that smelled so... bizarre. Bookshelves lined one wall, filled with ancient tomes, their titles inked in blood, or so the rumours went. First lesson, the warlock said, voice a scalpel of sound. True power comes not from herbs and tinctures, it comes from sacrifice. He picked up a gleaming, bone-handled dagger. Are you prepared? Fear coiled in my gut, tight and cold. This was far from my fever balms, yet what choice did I have? My life was forfeit, owed to him now. He turned towards a heavy wooden door, half hidden by shadows. A low moaning filtered through it, rising to a whimper that set the hairs on my neck on end. He met my eyes, his own glinting like a predator's in the gloom. Your potions, he hissed, will draw their potency from pain. Agony is their catalyst, despair their essence. Now, let us see what you are truly capable of. He flung open the door. The stench hit me, blood, sweat, and an undercurrent of something raw and feral. A cage barred the entrance, and within, a wretched creature huddled, its form indistinct, a jumble of matted fur and glistening eyes. The debt tightened around me like a garret. This was my repayment, not just service, but complicity in his... in his darkness. The path ahead stretched grim and unyielding, and I was already too far along to turn back. My hands trembled as he thrust the dagger into them, its hilt cold and unyielding. End its suffering, he commanded, his voice devoid of any pity. This is but the beginning of your education. The creature within the cage whimpered again, a broken, wounded sound. It was... I couldn't make out its form, just a tangle of dirty fur and a gleaming, baleful eye. You hesitate. The warlock's tone was not accusatory, simply observant. Compassion is a weakness, boy. It will be the death of you if you let it. My stomach heaved, but his words were a lash against my back. My debts pressed down, an unbearable weight threatening to crush me. Mother, with all her strange ways, had never been cruel. Now cruelty was a lesson on the syllabus. I stumbled forward, my movements clumsy. The creature cowered back as I neared, its eye widening in terror. For a wild moment, I saw myself trapped, cornered, the hangman's knot trading places for a different sort of doom. The dagger felt strangely light in my hand, as though rejecting its purpose. I... I can't... I choked out, voice a barely audible croak. The warlock's face tightened in displeasure. He took a step forward, a looming, spectral figure in the gloom. Obedience, he hissed, is the first rule a servant must learn. Defy me and you'll learn just how much worse your fate could have been beneath the gallows. His words were a bucket of icy water. He wouldn't tolerate defiance and I didn't harbour the foolish hope of escape. Jonas and the village would hand me right back to him, bound in terror of his power. Shame burned hot in my gut, twisting with the fear. I turned back to the cage, the dagger now feeling impossibly heavy. The creature stared up at me, and in its single visible eye lay not just fear, but a hint of desperate hope. I was already damned. But if my life was forfeit, I could at least make this end swift and clean. With shaking hands, I gripped the dagger hilt tighter. Just one thrust, to end its misery, a mercy neither of us were likely to receive. Steel met flesh, a wet, sickening sound. The creature convulsed once, then fell still, its lone eye glazing over. I staggered back, bile rising in my throat. Not from the sight of death, the village butcher saw to that often enough, but from the cold certainty that I'd crossed some invisible line. I was more than an outcast now, more than the witch's son. I was stained. The warlock stepped forward, a cruel satisfaction curving his thin lips. Good, he purred. You see? Not so difficult, once you silence that mewling heart of yours. He bent, his movement disturbingly graceful, and dipped a finger in the pooling blood. He drew a strange sigil on the floor, runes and spirals intertwining in a pattern that made my head throb. This creature, 
pitiful as it was, still holds power in death. We shall harness that essence. My skin prickled as if a thousand unseen ants crawled along it. The creature's body began to twitch, a horrifying parody of life. My legs threatened to buckle, but I somehow remained upright, watching in revulsion and fascination. Death, the warlock intoned, is but another ingredient. Power flows in these currents, boy, and you will learn to channel them. He held up his hand, the fingertips smeared with scarlet. Taste it. I hesitated for only the briefest of seconds before I leaned forward and licked the blood from his finger. It tasted of iron and something deeper, an acrid tang that burned its way down my throat. An odd warmth began to spread through my veins, countered by a wave of nausea. His smile was a thin slash in the gloom. This is your true path, boy. Not a healer, but a conduit. Embrace it, and it might just save you in the end. It was hard to tell if the last part was a promise or a threat. The room spun, the stench of decay mingled with the sharp metallic scent threatening to overwhelm me. I doubled over, retching, but there was nothing left to purge but acid and memory. The last thing I saw as darkness swallowed me was the warlock's satisfied gaze and the creature's empty husk, rising unnaturally onto its legs amidst the swirling, bloody sigil. I awoke to a splitting headache and the lingering taste of copper in my mouth. The memory of what happened in the tower was a shard of glass in my mind, sharp and inescapable. I lay there for an immeasurable time, staring at the cracked ceiling, the weight of guilt and a darker, wilder emotion warring within me. The tower was mercifully quiet. Had the warlock left, or was he simply letting me stew in my own misery? I didn't know which prospect was worse. Finally, hunger forced me to my feet. My legs felt wobbly and the room seemed to sway in an unnatural rhythm. The workbench and its array of ingredients swam before my eyes. I needed something to settle my stomach, something familiar. I knew enough of herbs. Surely there was something, a balm, a draught for this sour churning inside me. Frantically, I searched the shelves roots and dried flowers, powders shimmering with an odd luminescence. But none of it was right, nothing fit my simple, learned remedies. I'd never felt this unmoored before, this disconnected from my own knowledge. Then, tucked behind a jar of what looked suspiciously like powdered bone, I found a small leather pouch. Inside were dried leaves, pale and brittle, chamomile. It wasn't much, but it was a lifeline a tiny thread connecting me back to the life I'd known. I brewed the tea with shaking hands, the familiar scent bringing tears to my eyes. Yet as I sipped the bitter warmth, something was... different. The brew soothed the nausea, but under it was a subtle warmth, an unfamiliar tingle on my tongue. The warlock's words burned into my skull. Power flows in these currents, boy. Could a simple infusion hold such a change? Or was I changing, my senses now tainted by the darkness that clung to this place? Panic bubbled up, but I forced it down. There was no going back. Each sip of the tea felt like another drop of poison, but it was poison that also sustained me. Such were the bargains made in the shadows, the cruel exchange of survival for something else. I didn't even dare put a name to what I was becoming. The days in the tower were a monotonous rhythm of brewing, chanting and the slow, insidious seeping of the warlock's teachings into my core. The concoctions I made were no longer the tinctures of a village healer. Now they stank of decay and hummed with an unsettling energy that prickled against my skin. The warlock taught me how to harness agony, not to soothe it, Potions of despair, each drawn-out scream from the creatures confined below the tower, infusing them with a terrible potency. I began to learn his sigils, their twisting lines searing themselves into my memory. Symbols of binding, of domination. Sleep became a fraught thing. Dreams were no longer escapes, but vivid nightmares. I saw the faces of those I'd brewed for, 
their features twisted into masks of pain. And amidst the screams, a whisper, growing louder with each passing night. More. I began to understand that I was not simply an apprentice. I was his tool, being honed and shaped, and for what purpose I dared not fully imagine. Yet even amidst the growing dread, there was a perverse fascination. I'd always been the village oddity, but now, now there was a raw power simmering beneath my skin. My concoctions worked, twisted and foul as they were. Fear, once solely mine, now dripped off those who saw me pass. The warlock's mark was as clear on me as any brand. One day, as I ground herbs with a mortar and pestle, the familiar motion took on a frantic edge. My pulse quickened, not with the usual revulsion, but with a heady anticipation. I found myself muttering under my breath, stringing together the sigils of binding I'd learned on sleepless nights. A rat scuttled from a shadowed corner, drawn by the scent of dried seeds. My eyes latched onto it, and the words tumbled from my mouth in a harsh chant, punctuated by the rhythmic pounding of the pestle. The rat froze, then twitched violently, its limbs jerking as if controlled by an unseen puppet master. My breath hitched in my throat. It was a crude working, a petty spell, but I'd done it without the warlock's oversight. That surge of dark satisfaction was its own reward, and yet it curdled swiftly into self-disgust. He saw, of course. A thin smile touched his lips as he swept into the room. So the student experiments, he purred. You learn quickly, boy. Perhaps there's more to you than I first thought. My voice came out a choked whisper. What will you do to me? He tilted his head, a predatory gleam in his eyes. Do to you? My dear boy, this is what you will do to yourself. His words settled around me like a shroud. I imagined myself as the rat, twitching helplessly at the whim of a cruel master, an image unbearably close to reality. Yet was my own ambition not also a kind of puppet string? The whispers grew louder, the hunger demanding to be fed. The warlock turned his attention back to the workbench, his long fingers plucking at various ingredients. There is a restlessness in the village, he remarked casually. The miller's sons torment the animals and go unpunished. Old Jonas hoards his grain while families go hungry. Do you see, Adrian? These are the imbalances that breed a far deeper corruption. His words held a chilling logic. The village, with its petty cruelties and hypocrisies, had always felt rotten at its core. And hadn't my own life been the clearest proof of their willingness to sacrifice the vulnerable for the sake of order? Power, he continued, is the right to correct the scales. Tonight you will brew something special. A lesson for our neighbours. He handed me a small vial, the liquid inside swirling like storm clouds. It was his work, potent and unstable. A single drop of this in the right well. He trailed off, the silence more menacing than any threat. That night I crept into the sleeping village. My guilt was eating at me, but I buried it. The world had never shown me mercy, perhaps it was time to return the favour. The miller's house loomed dark and quiet. I slipped into the shadows, found the well, and tilted the vial. With a shiver, a single drop fell into the water, the start of a silent, terrible alchemy. As I moved through the hushed streets, I left a trail of tainted water in my wake. At Jonas's house, I hesitated only a moment before adding a drop to his own private cistern. These were the men who'd condemned me, and so they would be the first to taste the fruits of their judgment. It was done. I was not a thief in the night, but an agent of retribution. Yet as I retreated to the tower, the cold triumph was muddied. I thought of the miller's children, their impish grins and those they might bully in turn. Where did the cycle of corruption begin, and where did it truly end? Back in the tower, the warlock studied me his gaze dissecting. You hesitate again, he observed, his voice a whisper. And yet the work is done. What troubles you, boy? Are you not pleased with your own power? I opened my mouth to reply, but the words caught in my throat. It was more than guilt. Now, now I understood what he'd meant. 
This path I walked, fueled by my own resentments and fears, was a gradual descent into the very darkness I sought to punish. His words settled around me like a shroud. I was both the architect and victim of my own transformation. The nights passed in a relentless search for knowledge. The Warlock's library was vast, full of tomes bound in human skin and inked in the blood of creatures whose names I couldn't pronounce. No longer did I seek out the familiar solace of herbs. Now I explored the mechanics of pain, the rituals that could twist minds and reshape flesh. The village began to creep into my nightmares. I saw Jonas, his frail form crumbling into dust, his cries fueling a draft of righteous vengeance. I saw the tavern wench who'd once flashed me a kind smile, her eyes swirling with madness brought on by a potion slipped into her ale. The hunger within me whispered insidiously, painting these acts not as horrors, but as necessities, the price to be paid for strength. Then there was the mirror in the warlock's chambers. Once I'd avoided my own reflection, seeing too much of my mother's wildness in my features. Now I sought it out with morbid fascination. The boy who'd pleaded innocence at the gallows no longer existed. My eyes burned with an unnatural light. The pupils slitted, a predator's gaze. My skin had taken on a pallor that no amount of sunlight would cure. Yet it was the change I couldn't see that terrified me the most. The boundary between revulsion and thrill blurred each time I worked my craft. One night, I awoke not with screams in my ears but with a laugh bubbling in my throat. It was a dry, mirthless sound, the coldness of the stone walls amplifying its unsettling nature. Staring at my own reflection, I realized that he hadn't broken me. He'd simply brought out the darkness that had always lurked within, waiting for the right soil to take root. The next morning he found me hunched over one of his grimoires, chanting a binding spell under my breath. His smile was slow, calculating. There's been a... development in the nearby kingdom, he said, his voice laced with a dark anticipation. A king on his deathbed, a line of succession dripping with betrayal. It's time for your first true task, apprentice. My mouth went dry. What... What do you want me to do? Accelerate the inevitable, of course, he purred. A touch of poison, perhaps, or something more imaginative. Chaos is a ladder, and I intend for you to climb one bloody rung at a time. The warlock led me out of the village, away from the prying eyes that still held fear and hatred. We travelled for days, cloaked in shadow, moving like the outcasts we were. The forest surrounding the village had always seemed an impenetrable barrier, but now paths opened themselves before us, as if the wilderness itself bent to the warlock's will. The journey was an education of its own. He taught me how to mask my presence, a touch of spellcraft, a potion brewed from moonlit fungi, and I became as invisible as the wind. Even animals shied away, sensing the unnatural taint clinging to us. It seemed my change was more than just internal. I was becoming something other. The kingdom, when we reached it, was awash in grim splendor. Guards in livery watched from castle battlements, and the cobblestone streets teemed with merchants and beggars, their lives a vibrant medley against the backdrop of the towering palace. Your target is not the king himself he explained as we crouched among crumbling tombstones in an overgrown graveyard. The stench of decay was overpowering, but to me it now smelled almost like... opportunity. But his eldest son, the heir presumptive, arrogant and ambitious. He must be beloved for the plan to work, I murmured, remembering the warlock's words about chaos. A simple death would be mourned, but a fall from grace was the sort of spectacle that could break a kingdom. He inclined his head, a hint of approval in his icy gaze. Precisely. You are to drive him to madness, subtly at first. Let poison become paranoia, confidence turn to raving delusion. Let his closest allies see him not as a future king, but as a threat to the realm itself. 
The task was daunting, and yet a thrill shot through me. I'd gone from brewing healing drafts to shattering minds. This was the power I craved, the chance to leave my mark on the world, however twisted it may be. Slipping into the palace proved frighteningly simple. Illusion and bribery were my tools, and guards who should have barred my path became conduits for my silent passage. The prince's chambers were opulent, filled with treasures that spoke of wealth and influence. Here, my work would begin. Nights passed in a haze of whispered incantations. I mixed my brews from rare ingredients, each drop infused with discord. The potions themselves were scentless, tasteless, designed to slip seamlessly into the prince's wine, his food. With each dose, I pushed him further toward the brink, weaving nightmares into his sleep, turning every shadow into a lurking threat. News of the king's failing health brought a new urgency to my task. The kingdom hung on a thread, its ruler clinging to life, his eldest son spiralling into madness. Whispers slithered through the palace of the prince's erratic behaviour, his outbursts and his wild accusations against his closest advisers. I fed the fear, savouring my handiwork. But the king stubbornly clung to life, a candle refusing to be extinguished. The warlock grew impatient. He must die, he hissed, shadowy form blending with the gloom of my chamber as he materialised one night. A slow death filled with agony. The kingdom must know true despair before its fall. Despite the thrill of my success with the prince, a chill ran through me. I was no murderer, merely a poisoner, a manipulator. Yet the warlock's orders were absolute. To refuse was unthinkable. My life and whatever semblance of a soul I had left were bound to him. My potions took on a crueler edge. Using my growing knowledge of pain, distilled from the creatures in the tower, I crafted a draught that would gnaw at the king's insides, turning his every breath into a scream. Slipping it into his nightly tonic, administered by a terrified servant bribed into submission, was horrifyingly easy. The king's death was no swift mercy, his once regal chamber became a torture room, every moan music to the warlock's ears. I stayed hidden, aversion warring with a perverse fascination. This was what I had become, the architect of ruin. The prince, pushed into full-fledged insanity by my work, accused his siblings of poisoning the king. The court split into factions, brother turned against sister, advisers whispering of treason and plots in every shadowed corner. The perfect stage was set, but with my task complete I felt hollow, not triumphant. Once the death of someone like Jonas would have been a necessary evil in my eyes. Now, as the kingdom tore itself apart, I felt only emptiness. One moonless night, he came for me, a wraith in the darkness. It's time for the next step, he whispered his voice filled with a terrible glee. The dying kingdom is ripe for a new master, one of our making. I had gone from saving lives to destroying them. Now, I was about to watch a kingdom burn. A maelstrom raged within me as I followed the warlock through the crumbling underbelly of the castle. I'd committed heinous acts, but retreating now would be pointless. I was already irrevocably stained, might as well embrace the artistry of the fall. We emerged into the dank bowels of the palace dungeons. Even the usual despair that clung to such places was overshadowed by something darker. The source became clear as we rounded a corner. A figure was chained to the wall. Bare flesh crisscrossed with ritualistic scars, eyes burning with a terrible hunger. The warlock had never spoken of this prisoner, but I knew with a certainty that chilled me what I was seeing. It was another like me, a tool forged in shadow. He's not as refined as you have become, the warlock said, a morbid amusement in his tone, but raw power thrums within him. He is our blunt instrument, and you, my apprentice, shall be his guide. The prisoner snarled, chains rattling. A lifetime of abuse had stripped him of all but fury and that unsettling, insatiable hunger I'd felt reflected in my own nightmares. It was a reminder of the path I was on, 
lose my grip on control, and I could end up a mindless beast myself. He turned his piercing gaze on me. The kingdom is primed for its fall. Rival factions bay for each other's blood, the prince a puppet dancing to your poisoned tunes. Now comes the true destruction. He produced an amulet, a bizarre thing wrought from tarnished silver and bone. Channel your power into this, he instructed. Focus your will. The creature is bound to it. Together you shall unleash havoc upon the kingdom. My hands trembled as I took the amulet. Its touch burned against my skin, filling me with a heady mix of revulsion and a twisted exhilaration. This was not the subtle manipulation I'd honed, but a blunt strike aimed at the heart of the realm. I closed my eyes, sinking deep into the darkness the warlock had cultivated within me. My whispers were no longer soothing incantations, but bizarre chants drawn from the tomes that lined the tower. The amulet flared in my hands, feeding off my tainted energy. Across the dungeon, the chained man convulsed, screaming wordlessly as power, raw and uncontrollable, surged from him. The very stones of the dungeon throbbed in response. This was no subtle poison, but a cataclysm in the making. And I was its architect. The world warped through a lens of pain and seething power. The prisoner's screams became a symphony of madness, a conduit for the energy that churned within me and poured mercilessly into the amulet. His bonds strained, ancient metal groaning in protest. Even with my burgeoning mastery, this felt reckless, dangerous. If I lost control, this force could rip through the dungeon, through the palace, through the entire unsuspecting kingdom, leaving a swath of ruin in its wake. The warlock, however, watched with detachment. To him, this was not chaos, but creation. The kingdom would shatter, and from its ashes would rise whatever twisted design he intended. I was merely the instrument, the brush that painted his masterpiece. The amulet throbbed violently, becoming scalding hot against my skin. The prisoner's flesh began to shift and distort, his cries morphing into a warped, inhuman sounds. The chain snapped, not through force, but as if the metal itself melted away under the onslaught of power. What emerged from the shadows was no longer a man. It was a hulking monstrosity, skin mottled and shifting, eyes filled with nothing but rage. I stumbled back, nausea and a terrible awe twisting in my gut. I had unleashed something beyond my comprehension. Guide it, the warlock hissed, his voice cutting through the bestial roaring. To the throne room! Now! Fear was a cold stone settling in my stomach, but under it fled something else, that intoxicating taste of power. With trembling hands, I drew a bloody sigil in the air, a command of binding and direction, one of the strongest I knew. The creature hesitated, then turned ponderously. Its footsteps shook the dungeon floor, cracking the stones. Then, with a ground-shattering bellow, it hurtled towards the exit, leaving me in a haze of dust. I followed at a distance the amulet a leaden weight in my hand, each beat of my heart a countdown to the cataclysm to come. As we neared the throne room, the din of battle reached my ears. The prince's madness, my own handiwork, had ignited civil war within the palace. The kingdom teetered on the precipice, and I, with a shudder, gave it the final, irrevocable push. The throne room was a tableau of carnage. Wall decorations ripped, gilded furniture overturned. Bodies of knights and courtiers littered the floor, some bearing the prince's livery, others those of rival factions. In the center of the chaos, the prince raved atop his throne, crown askew, eyes bulging in madness. He clutched a bloodied sword, slashing at unseen enemies, his every shriek another nail in the kingdom's coffin. It was my doing, this utter ruin, and in his shattered reflection, I saw a glimpse of my own future. Then the doors exploded inward. The creature surged into the room. The prince's mad cries choked off as real terror dawned. Knights, already weakened from the infighting, turned to face this new horror. Their weapons were futile, mere toys against its colossal form and the energy that wreathed it. 
The slaughter was swift and brutal. I watched from the shadows, unable to look away, the amulet cold and heavy against my chest. This was the power I'd craved, the chance to leave my mark on the world, no matter how vicious or vile. And now I was complicit in the deaths of innocence. The warlock emerged into the carnage, his thin smile widening at the scene of destruction. The dying prince whimpered at his feet, a broken shell of the regal figure he'd once been. The warlock regarded him with the same detachment he did a beetle pinned under glass. Well done, apprentice, he said, and though his voice was quiet, it cut through the fading sounds of battle. The old order is swept away. Now, we build anew. He turned towards the shattered throne. His gaze settled on me, and even in the dim room, his eyes seemed to burn with an unholy fervor. A kingdom ruled not by bloodlines and tradition, but by strength and will. Where those who embrace darkness reign supreme. For a moment, I envisioned defying him, turning the amulet on its master. But the chains were too strong, the debt too great. I'd bound myself to this path, drawn by ambition and a twisted curiosity that had warped into something far darker. Instead, I stepped out of the shadows, the weight of guilt as heavy as the amulet that seared my flesh. There was no glory in this victory, no redemption for me. Power had tasted like ashes from the start, and now I was condemned to drink the cup to its bitter end. We were the architects of an age of ruin, and I could already taste the blood and madness on the wind. Decades turned in a grim cycle. Kingdoms fell and rose, each bearing the scars of our dark influence. The warlock's vision took shape, a world where might was right, cruelty was currency, and ambition was the only true god. I became his shadow, the unseen hand that shattered rebellions and sparked conflicts, always one step ahead thanks to potions of divination and despair. Some called me a demon, whispered my name in fear, and they weren't far wrong. The amulet, a constant reminder of the creature I had unleashed, seared my skin even as my power grew. I plunged deeper into forbidden realms, twisting magic and flesh alike until the line blurred. I could summon wraiths from the underworld, bend creatures of nightmare to my will. I was the boogeyman used by mothers to scare their children into obedience. Yet the thrill that once coursed through my veins had soured into a bitter aftertaste. Each victory was hollow, built on foundations of misery. I saw my legacy clearly now, not monuments but graveyards filled with the innocent and the ambitious alike. I hadn't carved my mark into the world. I'd infected it with a spreading rot. The warlock, despite his ageless appearance, had begun to weaken. His grand vision had taken its toll, and he retreated to his tower more frequently, leaving the dirty work to me. I had become the force I once feared, the noose that tightened around necks, both noble and common. And the boy who dreamt of healing? That boy was buried under layers of ambition and blood-soaked power. Sometimes, in the few moments of quiet the world afforded me, I'd wonder what he would think if he could see me now. Most times, I was too afraid to find out. One night, as a storm raged across a kingdom I had brought to its knees, I found him slumped over his workbench, a half-finished potion spilling onto ancient scrolls. His breathing was shallow, his once iron grip on life loosening. He lifted a shaking hand, beckoning me closer. His ice-blue eyes, usually so piercing, were now dulled. My time comes to an end, he rasped, each word a painful effort. And your kingdom of shadows, I asked, my voice hoarse. A ghost of a smile twisted his lips. Seeds take time to... sprout. You have learned well. He coughed, and the sound turned wet and rattling. With his remaining strength, he thrust the amulet into my unresisting hands. The dark power throbbed, but it was nothing compared to the emptiness yawning within me. Finish what I started, he gasped. Then his hand fell limp. 
The warlock, my master, my architect of ruin, was dead. I stood there until the storm passed, watching the first rays of dawn paint the tower walls blood red. The world lay before me, ripe for the taking. But as I clutched the amulet, it felt not like a key to dominion, but the heaviest of shackles. My path was clear. It was a path of thorns with no turning back. The warlock had been right. His teachings were the truest stain upon my soul. Now, I was both heir and prisoner to a kingdom of unending darkness. The boy who'd once brewed healing salves damned to rule a world drowning in poison.